Readers, today we are starting the new chapter on data. So this is when we get all the little bits of information and then we organize them so that it's easy to compare our information. So you're going to need your book. I would say go ahead and get your whole pencil box because you're going to want some crayons for today. So definitely pencil and eraser, also crayons. So at that point, it's just easier to have your pencil box. And uh, then you're also going to need the counters that I put into your packet for this week. So, you know, yellow on one side, red on the other side, go ahead and get those counters as well as your book and your pencil box. All right, guys, well, today you are going to be doing amazing work. We are actually going to do the introduction to chapter 10, not all of it, but a lot of it, as well as doing lesson 10.1. So represent data. Now, represent, of course, means to kind of make what it looks like. Data just means all those little bits and pieces of information. So down here, how many days will it snow or rain this week where you live? How can you find out? Well, we could look at the weather forecast, but really when we're talking about data, we're not looking at what they say is gonna happen. We're looking at what did happen. We're gonna record that information. So if you're wanting to know about snow and rain this week, you're actually gonna watch as we go through the week and you would write down how many days it snows and how many days it rains. And then you might represent that in something like a graph or a chart. And that's what we're going to take a look at here on the next couple of pages. So this says sort of handful of red color tiles and yellow color tiles make a concrete graph. So we actually are going to be using our counters instead of color tiles. So go ahead and just drop your counters down and everybody's gonna end up with a different answer for this. First of all, you have more counters than I do. I only have 10, you have 15. So just kind of let them go down and then separate them out. See how many you have of each color and then go ahead for a concrete graph. You're actually gonna draw them in. So I'm not gonna do my yellow ones cause you wouldn't, oops, sorry see it very well with that but here i have this one this one this one this one this one this one and this one and then for yellow ones we'll pretend this blue is yellow i don't have a yellow marker i just have these three then the question, how many red color tiles are there? Where we'll start substituting our red counters, and we can count that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you may have a different number here because you started out with a different number of counters, and your counters might have come down with different colors than mine did. So your answer probably is not going to be seven. Your answer needs to agree with what you have here in your graph. All right, color the squares to show a set of fewer. Remember, fewer means less than, not as many, a smaller number. So we're definitely not going to color all of these, right? Because that would be greater than, that would be more. We're not going to color it up to here because that would be equal. They would be the same. We want to have fewer. Now you could choose because these would be fewer. These would be fewer or just this would be fewer, and you choose how many of those you're going to color. Now here, draw a circle below each picture to show the same number of objects. Again, guys, these are pretty easy. This is kind of just getting our brain prepared for the work that we're gonna be doing. So do you see here now they match up? All right, next page. This one is gonna be up to you. In this chart, we have a column for the words, a column for I know, a column for sounds familiar. So familiar means you, you've heard of it before, but I know means, man, I, I know this word exactly. I know precisely what this word is. I have no question about it. Like say flower, you know exactly what a flower is. Sounds familiar. If I said to you, calendula flower, some of you may have heard of calendula flowers before. Some of you may never heard that word before in your life. So then you would put, I do not know. So you're gonna look here and if it says this word, graph, say, oh, absolutely, I know exactly what a graph is. I could teach other people what a graph is. 
maybe it sounds familiar to you, but it's not like you know it so well you could teach it other people. Or maybe you've never heard the word graph before. And then you put a check mark over here. Put a check mark for whichever one would apply here. More. Oh, yes, absolutely. I know what more means. More. Oh, it sounds familiar, but I'm not exactly sure. Or I don't know. Fewer. Again, choose which column your check mark should go in. Most. Choose which column and fewest. So boys and girls, you may all have different answers for this chart and they're all correct. You're just putting down what you know. This is just to get your brain ready for what we need to think about. Do you see our yellow box with review words? These are the same words, graph, more, fewer, most, and fewest. So when we talk about comparing here, remember we're going to use those words from the yellow box down here. If we just have two groups. We don't say this group has most and this group has the fewest or the least. When we're just comparing two, we use these two words here. So here this one doesn't have as many. It has fewer. This does have more than this one, we wouldn't say it has the most. We only use the word most when we have more than two. So here we're going to use more. But now when you look down here, do you see how you have three groups? When you have more than two groups, you might use the words most and fewest. So I want you to think down here, which of these groups has the most write that on the line underneath and which has the fewest write that on the line underneath and then you can see this one here that's the middle that one doesn't get any words the game i did not send you the materials that you need to play the game with so you can skip the game page if you want to put together materials from home to play the game you can but you don't have the materials from me so go ahead and skip it unless you want to try to do it so here's where we're getting to today to today's actual work lesson 10.1 read picture graphs. Now the other word people call this sometimes is pictograph. So you might see it sometimes in a different math book called pictograph instead of picture graph. Those mean the same thing. They say picture graph, I think because they're wanting students to understand that when we say pictograph, we mean a graph that uses actual pictures. So here it says to use cubes, draw to show the cubes and write how many more. So you guys don't have cubes, what you do have are counters. So here's what we're going to be doing. For the blue counters here, go ahead and use the red side for the green, uh, sorry, for the blue cubes. For the green cubes, use the yellow side of your counters. So we have two green cubes, so that means two yellow counters, and four blue cubes, so that means two red counters. Now, I know a lot of you guys could do this in your head, but remember when we actually do it with our hands, our brains get smarter about it. How many more blue cubes, red counters, are there than green cubes, yellow counters? So, you know, you guys probably just know this, but if you're looking at this to compare, you can see that these two line up and these two line up, but this one goes to an empty space and this one goes to an empty space. So this part right here is what tells us how many more red ones and how many fewer yellow ones. So we have two more. All right, next page of course will have the purple box with our key information. So here, model and draw. A picture graph uses pictures to show information. Now, some important things to notice about this. The picture graphs also have titles, just like all graphs and charts should. They also have a key that tells you what each picture means. So here it tells you each little stick figure stands for one child. So this means one child, and this means another child, and this means another child, and still another child, and there's a child, and there's a child. So you can see up here, there are four children on the swings. One, two, three, four. 
there are how many children on the slide? Two. There are more children on the. Now here it doesn't ask how many more, like it did on the previous page, just how many. So you can see, uh, sorry, which one has more? You can see here, this line goes farther. This one has more, so you can write that word right there. Down here, our favorite activity at the fair. Again, each stick figure stands for one child, so you can see how many uh, had rides as their favorite activity and how many had animals as their favorite activity. So we're gonna use this graph to answer the questions. Which activity did more children choose? Well, you can see here is more. So we're gonna circle the one that means rides. How many children chose animals? Well, you can count how many was that and write that number here. How many children chose rides? Again, count the stick figures, write that number here. Now, how many fewer children chose animals than rides? Well, remember again, these match. When we make graphs, what we're doing is we're organizing all of our data, all our little bits of information really neatly. So each little box means the same thing. So we can match them up evenly, right? We don't have all these five animals, people who chose animals all squished down here into the space and the people who chose rides all spread out. They go right on top of each other. So then we can see easily these two have no match. Right here, there are fewer children choosing animals than rides, so we can see easily how many fewer it is. Next page, you can see this graph, what we drink for lunch, milk, juice, water. You can see how many children chose each one because same as those other graphs, each stick figure stands for one child. So I'm gonna let you guys do this on your own, how many children drink milk. But take a look here, how many children in all drink juice and water? So you're not just gonna tell me how many drink water. You're not just gonna tell me how many drink juice. We need to count it all up together. You can see here, one, two, three, four, five, and three more, six, seven, eight. Eight children drink both juice and water. What do most children drink for lunch? You can circle that. How many more children drink milk than juice? So guys, just like we had done before, these match up. But right over here, there are no matches on these, are they? So figure out how many is it here that don't have the match between milk and juice. That's how many more drink milk than juice. A similar problem, how many fewer children drink water than milk? So now you're gonna need to skip a line, right? because we're not matching up milk and juice. We're not matching up water and juice. We're matching up water and milk. So these guys have a match. These match, these match, these match, these match. And now we're not looking at this. We're looking over here. Here, there's no match. How many fewer chose water than milk? You guys can figure that out and write the answer down here. How many children in all drink milk, juice, and water. Well, we counted up juice and water already, right? So now we just need to add in that. So here's eight juice and water. Did you count up how many drank milk and put that here? Because I bet you're gonna find a doubles fact right there that you know the answer to, that you can write right here for how many children in all drink all of that. Who now, four new children join the class. They drink juice at lunch, all of them. Now, how many more children drink juice than water? So first thing we have to do is add this data, this new information to our graph. So let's go back up to the graph and we're gonna put in four more children drink, drinking juice. So here's our line for juice and here's the last empty box. So this is where we put it in. There's one more two more. Now, remember, I'm putting one in each box. I'm not going to squeeze them up in here because I need to keep my data all lined up neatly. Now, remember, we need to have four more drinking juice. So here's three more drinking juice, four more drinking juice. And then the question was, 
now how many more children whoop, drink juice than water? So we can go up here and we can look at what matches up. These, 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 these match. Now right here, there are the ones with no match. And that number goes down here. Last page, our favorite animal at the zoo. Each stick figure stands for one child, just like on all of these. We have zebras, lions, and seals. Oh my goodness, I love seals. I can't believe more people didn't choose seals. Write a number sentence to solve the problem. I'm gonna do this one with you. Uh, maybe we'll do both of these together. How many children chose zebras and seals all together? Well, zebras, you can count up how many. Put that number here. seals here and then how many is that going to be so boys and girls if we're looking at how many chose that all together that's going to be addition right we're putting these numbers together you can write the sum here and write down how many children right there how many more children chose lions than seals well then we're comparing right and we're not going to look at these and add that together that tells us how many chose those all together but we actually, we see this has the match. And this one doesn't, this one doesn't, this one doesn't, this one. So do you see, we've done this a little bit with bar models before. We take this one and it sort of takes that one off. So what we're actually doing here is subtracting. You guys see if you can figure out which numbers should go into those places. All right, hot problem. How many more children chose lions than zebras and seals altogether? Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, if we're asking that question, how many more, we're subtracting just like we did here on number 13. Then we need to know how many chose lions. So you can count up how many chose lions and write that number right here. How many more chose lions than zebras and seals together well you can look back here at number 12 in number 12 you looked at how many chose zebras and seals all together so you're going to take that number and put it down here because you want the difference between lions all on their own and zebras and seals put together and then you can see if you subtract zebras and seals from lions What's the difference? Put it down in both places. Now for our test prep, we're going back up to that same animals at the zoo graph. How many children chose lions? Well, that's not very hard at all, right? You can just count that up because each of those stick figures means one child, and you, then you can color in the circle. Boys and girls, strong work. You did two parts. Well, the first one, we didn't do the whole thing, but you got the introduction to the, the new chapter finished and you did lesson one. So you're gonna be all ready now to uh, just be running through this with lesson 10.2 tomorrow. Bye-bye.